Hi guys, Julia here from JM Squared Vintage. Welcome back to the channel. I am here today with a ship with me. These are all orders that came through over the weekend. Some really like interesting sales. One crazy quick sale, one of my favorite vintage pieces of all time sold. So I cannot wait to talk about like what sold, how long I had it for, what I got it for, what I sold it for. Really just kind of like bring you into that part of the process. But before we get started here, if this is your first time here, if this is your first time stumbling on my channel, first and foremost, welcome. I am Julia, that is my name. We talk all things thrifting and vintage and the business of reselling on the internet here. If that sounds like something that you might be into, consider hitting subscribe down below. I would love to have you along on this journey. But without further ado guys, it is as usual, late. It's about three o'clock. I need to get these things packed up, loaded in my car and down to the post office ASAP before they close. So why don't you go grab yourself a snack, grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and let's get into the shipments. All right, so the first piece we have here is this gorgeous pair of silk pants. This is literally like, I just took them out of the dry cleaner bag, so I want to get these things wrapped up ASAP. This is from a designer named Acris. If you are not familiar with Acris, I strongly recommend you get familiar. Let me see if I can show you this tag. Acris is an incredibly expensive brand. Uh, these probably retail north of a thousand dollars. They're mulberry silk, they're beautiful stripes. And when I am working with something as nice as like an Acris pant, again, this is a smaller brand, you might not be aware of it. If you are, let me know if you've ever found a pair of Acris pants while you were out shopping. If not, just commit that name to memory. But when I'm dealing with something at this stature, especially when it's something that is like silk, I'll generally spring and get it dry cleaned. That's just, you know, when I'm when I'm operating at these like upper echelons of fashion, like that's, you should do it. People are gonna be paying a little bit more for this. Now these I had for a while, and I'm kind of not surprised about that. Like when you are dealing with something that is super expensive, it's just gonna be a more limited buyer pool. And that's okay. These are also kind of tailored slim pants. Pants in general, unless they're very, very like classic pants. I've had a couple pairs of pants from like The Row, just like plain black pants. They sell in like a day. These are striped silk unlined pants. <laughs> so a further smaller buyer pool. But yeah, generally like if I'm in something that, you know, maybe cost a thousand dollars, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that to get dry cleaned. I've got a great dry cleaner near me. It's not super expensive. And as long as the profit is there, even at the lower end of the price range that I might get for it. I just feel like it's the right thing to do. Let me know, do you ever, like what, what is your criteria as a seller for what you will and won't get dry cleaned? I'm interested to know how everybody else does it. I'll do it on like vintage pieces that are kind of irreplaceable. I'll do it on super high end pieces like this. Anyway, so I had these pants for almost a year. I did pay a dollar for them at the bins, which is, insane. I had them listed for $89 and I ultimately got an offer. I went back and forth with this gal and we landed on $55, which I was glad to take. You know, I had had them for a year. I was ready to move them on. They are a great pair of pants. I want them to get used. So with a $1 cost of the bins, this brought me to a profit of $43 even. So I hope she loves them. They are special. Like I would love to find a piece from Acris that is my size. Next up, another strangely summer thing, like on the cusp of winter. So this is what is called a surf suit. And you probably see a lot of this for kids. I think they call them sun suits for kids. But when you get into the more adult sizes, you're, you're in the surf suit range. It's got like a little string on the back here, like a wetsuit has, so you can like put it on yourself long sleeves, and this does have built-in cups, which is kind of nice. So this is from a brand called Axie, and I had never really heard of it. I don't think it's a particularly high-end brand. The reason I picked this up alone is because it is an adult size surf suit, and they tend to be pretty expensive and pretty difficult to find unless you're looking at something like a Roxy or like an actual surf company, and those go up into the hundreds, and a lot of them have like open backs. So this is full coverage. I can 100% see this being used by somebody who like spends a lot of time outside in the sun because these tend to be like UPF 50. I'll tell you, as a girl who absolutely took herself to Hollywood tans to attempt to tan this pale self, it's nice to see the new generation being really hip to like sunscreen. Let me know 
if you ever did the Hollywood Tans thing. Is Hollywood Tans still around? Let me know if you have a location near you. They were everywhere. There were so many people, like if I look back on my pictures from college, I mean, so tan. There's no way that people could be as tan as they were. And then there's me, like I'm the like white spot in the middle of the picture. Let me know, is Hollywood Tans still around? Is it still a thing? I I feel like I haven't seen it. This is California, so people just like go outside to tan, I think. But fun story about Hollywood tan. So typically, if memory serves me right, we're going back like 20 years. You would go in and like your first day, they would say, okay, you can go in for five minutes and then you build up over time, right? Like by the end, you're going in for 10 minutes. And I remember them looking at me, giving me like a once over, they're like, you go in for three. And I remember coming out red as a lobster. I mean, I tried. I tried, I put in I put in a valiant effort, but thank goodness I did not get too into that. Like so many people would go three, four times a week. They had like the tanning lotions. <laughs> they had the tanning lotions like in their car, the tingle lotion. Oh my God, just let me know. Let me know if you remember all that. Thanks for the little walk down memory lane. Anyway, super happy that like sunsuits are a thing now because skin cancer is just, I know way too many people my age who are dealing with precancerous spots and guys, SPF every day. If you haven't tried it yet, Korean sunscreen is it. So I had this listed for $26 for two months and I got an offer for $20, which I gladly accepted. With a $1 cost of the bins, this brought me to a profit of $15.80. I think this brand in particular retails around the $60 mark, so that was a great price and I hope she loves it. Oh, nothing like walking down the memory lane of Hollywood tans and Playboy bunny stickers to see how dark your tan was. How we survived the early 2000s, guys, I will never know. Next up, now this was a brand I was not familiar with, but man, when I felt it, I was like, this is the softest t-shirt I've ever felt. This is from a designer called Enza Costa. I believe they're sold at Revolve, but this t-shirt is a cashmere cotton blend. So it feels like it's light like a t-shirt, but it has the softness of cashmere, it's unreal. This is in perfect condition, long kind of oversized sleeves with the thumb holes. These retail for like $200. So if you are in the market for like ultra luxury basics, check out this designer. They resell anywhere between like 40 and $80, depending on like the style, the size, all that kind of stuff. I think this is a few years old just because it's got one of the bigger necklines. The ones that they're making now have like crew necks that go right up to the neck. This one's a little bit more of a scoop, but yeah, check them out because I want every t-shirt I own to be made of cashmere cotton. Aim high, Julia, aim high. So this guy I had listed for just one week. Definitely a Bolo brand for sure. So I had it listed for just one week and I had it listed for $58 and I got an offer for 49, which I gladly accepted. With a $1 cost of the bins, this brought me to a profit of $38.20. I know we are all looking for super special pieces when we're in the bins, but guys, pay attention to the basics. Like that is something that just feel found me. I don't wear gloves in the bins. I know a lot of people do, totally understand why you do. But if you are somebody that does not wear gloves in the bins, like take some time to feel all those basics because stuff like that is out there. James Purse, Enza Costa, like they are in those massive piles of a hundred white t-shirts that are crap, but it's worth going through it to find something like that. Next up, now this is something that I had gotten before summer and I'm not at all surprised that it didn't sell until now because now is about the time. This is a Patagonia retool snap fleece. This particular model is more slim fit than like the cinchillas. The cinchillas, if you're thinking about like a Patagonia fleece, it has kind of like an Aztec print to it. Those are the cinchilla snap fleeces. These are the retool snap fleeces. These are a little bit softer, a little bit slimmer cut. And it is a size small, so I knew that that would slow it down a little bit, but either way, I'm gonna pick up Patagonia anytime I see it at the bins. It sells, it sells for good reason. It's freaking fantastic stuff. I had one of these, this exact model in a blue and green. I sold it years ago. And wait for warmth, these things are amazing. Like there's a lot of places in this country where you could get away with this being basically a winter jacket. Maybe not Minnesota. Y'all suffer through your winters, man. It is, that is next level cold up there. But you know, if you live in the South, throw this on, you're as warm as you're gonna need to be. And Patagonia, the cool thing about Patagonia is that their styles don't change all that much from year to year. And their resale value is always held. I buy Patagonia, I know Patagonia is expensive. I buy Patagonia with like 
confidence knowing that if in two or three years I'm over it, I can turn around and sell it for not as much as I paid for it, but I can always get a good amount of money back because the name, it's one of the few brands whose name stands for quality and has forever and ever and probably always will. I don't think we'll ever see a day where the name Patagonia isn't synonymous with like quality and sustainability. I think that they're considered one of, one of the top I know they're one of the top 10 most sustainable companies out there, and I'm pretty sure they're either number one or number two. So they're no joke. They don't just talk the talk, they walk the walk. And even better yet, if you can get it on the secondhand market. So I had this guy for just about six months, and I had it listed for $48. Got an offer for $40.80, which I gladly accepted with a $1 cost of the bins. This brought me to a profit of $34.74. Anytime I see Patagonia, I'm picking that up. Next up, this is kind of an interesting one. So this is something I found about a year ago. This is a jersey. It's brand new with tags. The brand on it here is Just Don All City. Now I've heard the name Just Don. Just Don is a pretty big name in the streetwear world. Very, very expensive. Think like if this was a Just Don jersey, this would be like $500 very spendy. As it turns out, and I just thought it was kind of fun. I like the colors of it. As it turns out, All City by Just Don, this is like a diffusion brand, and it was something that they did exclusively with, I think it was Foot Locker. So definitely down market from the main stuff, but still really good quality. I picked it up regardless. It's also brand new with tags, so definitely something that I knew would sell like probably around holiday time. But let me know if any of you have ever heard of Just Don or if you have found a piece by them. I'm, I'm interested. I've never found one in the thrift or in the bins, so definitely a brand I would be excited to find, that's for sure. So I had this listed for just over a year. It took a little bit longer to sell than I anticipated, but of course we're always learning here. And I had it listed for $40 and I got an offer for $32, which I gladly accepted. I was ready to move this on. This had a $3 cost at a sale day at one of my local thrift stores. So with $3 cost, that brings me to a profit of $25 even. So I hope this goes to good use. It is a really cute jersey. Oh, next up, this is one, this is going to one of you guys. So this is a pair of Beta Brand pants. Now, Beta Brand, if you are unfamiliar, I don't think it does, it doesn't do as well as it used to, that's for sure. But if you are somebody who has to dress in office attire, this is a brand to have on your radar. But anyway, so Beta Brand, I want to say that their first big, like, product to the market was called the... are somebody who is dressing for the office every day and you would rather feel a little bit more like you were in loungewear at home, check out Beta Brand. Now these used to resell, I wanna say they were over $100 new. But these used to resell in the $50 to $60 range, kinda in the same range, I would say, as like a Spanx pants. They've come down some, and I think that's just mostly a product of so many people working remotely, but they are still an amazing option if you wanna look tailored and feel like you're wearing leggings, because that's literally what they do. So I had these listed for about six months, and I had them listed for $34, and I got an offer for $27, which I gladly accepted. And with a $1 cost of the bins, this brings me to a profit of $20.60. I hope you love them. Hopefully those bring you a little bit of comfort. Next up, this was an interesting thing I found. So this, this is a reversible silk shell. The color of this made me think that this is maybe Lunia because I know Lunia does silk in this gorgeous kind of like dusty orchid color, but there is no tags, no remnants of a tag. I mean, it's, it's a reversible piece, right? So like, it's got a button on the inside here as well as it does on the outside. So there's really no place to put any kind of branding unless they did it on the buttons and the buttons weren't branded. So I have no clue what this was, but I knew it was mulberry silk. And when I see mulberry silk in great condition, I'm gonna pick it up, especially at the bins. Cause it's expensive, like silk, no matter what is expensive. And this color of silk I think is in demand in and of itself. Gently fold that. This mulberry silk charmeuse is so slippery. So I have to wrap this kind of tight to keep it in place while it's in, in transit. But Lunia, if you are unfamiliar with that brand, you definitely want to get familiar with it. I've only found one or two pieces and none of them the pajamas, but that is on my bucket list. It is first and foremost on the bucket list for myself because, you know, 
I also want $300 silk pajamas. And then I wanna find a pair. Ideally, I'd like to find a pair in my size and then another pair that I can sell on the same day. Let's just put that up to the thrift gods. They do deliver sometimes. So I had this listed for just about two months. And I'll tell you, if these were branded, if these were Lunia, like, and we knew that they were Lunia, they probably would have sold in about two days. It's one of those brands that's like in and out of your closet super quick. So anyway, I had this listed for $38. And I got an offer for $32.30, which I gladly accepted. With a $1 cost of the bins, this brought me to a profit of $30.28. So I hope she loves it. It is beautiful. I would like to drape my entire life in that fabric. All right, next up. Now, this was a crazy one. This is a Nike tee that I picked up. Now, I almost never pick up Nike. I do see quite a bit of it, but this was just so unusual. Uh, this is part of their Project Euphoria collection, and I apologize, I know one of you wanted this, and before I even had a chance to reply to your comment and say that it was listed, it was sold. So, definitely something to be on the lookout for. I'm interested, has anybody ever found something from Pro Project Euphoria? Like, let me know, did it sell crazy quick like this? I just thought it was so cute. I loved the colors. The embellishment was really nice. This is all like stitched on ribbons. This is like chenille, kind of like a varsity letter. Cropped oversized fit t-shirt. This must have been just like a limited edition collab that they did, but I think I can't stand about Nike is they do a ton of stuff like this, but then like once the collabs are done, they take down all of the information about it. So I don't know like who Project Euphoria is, if it's just something that they did internally, if it was just a limited edition or if this was a collab with somebody, I don't know. Let me know if you know what this was, but I'm just a curious person. And when I find something like this, I like to know the backstory of it. And I really like, I could not find anything. I'm gonna assume it wasn't anything that they did with a celebrity because usually I can find like a press release or some kind of write up about the collection, but I found nothing about this, but it was so cute. And some of the other pieces, if you like this kind of bright, cheerful, abstract, irreverent type stuff. Look at some of the other pieces in this collection. There are some really like fun, whimsical, colorful pieces. So I will be keeping my eyes out for sure. So I had this listed for $35 and it popped through again within like hours of me listing it for a full price sale. So I can't be mad at that. And with a $1 cost of the bins, this brought me to a profit of $32.31. So, so cute though, really. Just so cute. Next up, this is one of those bread and butter things that I will pick up every time. This is from Patagonia. This is a little base layer long sleeve tee. Patagonia, again, I will pick up anything I find from them. And I will say like this color story for Patagonia is so like on brand, this kind of brown and tan. I don't see much of it. And I think it's because these kind of colors sell out really quickly. Again, I lived in the mountains of Utah. So I saw a lot, a lot of Patagonia all the time. And th I know the guy who wears these colors from Patagonia. I should say, I know a lot of the guys who wear this kind of stuff from Patagonia. But their base layers are great. Personally, that's what I use when I go snowboarding. I use their mid weight or I use their mid weight or I use their R1 heavyweight. I did have a pair of their like Capilene Air, which is their warmest level base layers, which by the way, retail for like $156 a piece. So this is like a base layer set that is over $300. But to be totally frank, it was never cold enough to justify wearing them and certainly never cold enough to justify keeping them. So I sold them. They are great. They wash up great. They last forever. They're made really well. They are quite warm. And the thing for me, and this is like a real bugaboo, let me know if you are a skier and you deal with the same issue. Like for a lot of years, if you were to go and buy like Burton, which is a big snowboard company, if you are unfamiliar, uh, if you were to go and buy like Burton base layers, they were all very low waisted. And the fact of the matter is like when you snowboard, you're sitting a lot because you're strapping in and strapping out. It's not like skis where when you're resting, you can like put your poles down and kind of stand straight. Like on a snowboard, your feet are spread, your legs are bent. So usually if you're resting, you're sitting down and like low waisted things and sitting down in snow are not a match made in heaven. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about. I still have anger about that phase. Now we do bibs. Now, now I'm an overall gal and I'll never go back. 
So anyway, I had this listed for about three months and I had so much interest in it. I think I got 40 or 50 offers on Depop on this. None of them popped through. I got another offer popped through for $20, which I accepted. You know, once I have an experience like that with Depop, I just kind of don't expect for any of the offers to come through on a certain item. But this one did pop through. With a $1 cost of the bins, this brings me to a profit of $17.62. Patagonia face layers are, again, they're just the best. So next up is this super cute linen blend open weave Eileen Fisher sweater. This is a smaller size. I prefer finding Eileen Fisher in size like large, extra large and up, but I'm never gonna leave a piece behind, especially if it's in good condition. This is open weave, but unlined, gorgeous condition. This is such a beach sweater, but I had gotten this and I kind of anticipated holding onto it until summer because it is such a summery sweater. But here we are. It's funny, I feel like I go through waves with Eileen Fisher where I'll go to the bins and I'll find three pieces and then I'll find three pieces the next week and then I'll go through like a month where I don't find anything. It's one of my favorite brands to find. It is a guaranteed seller. I mean, they are so expensive retail. Their sweaters retail $300 is crazy, crazy expensive, but very classic styles, you know, excellent textiles. They're beautifully made. They're made to last. So you get, you know, you get what you pay for. If this is your vibe, check out the secondhand market. There's a lot out there and you can get a great deal. So I had this listed for $38 for about two months and I got an offer for $25, which I did accept. It was kind of a slower date. So I went ahead and accepted that. The $1 cost of the bins has brought me to a profit of $19 even, which I'm not mad at. I live for like a crisp white linen sweater. It's funny because I wash, you know, like linen sweaters I'll always wash and when I send them out, they're usually a little bit crispy because I air dry things. And it's one of those things that like once you start wearing it, like midway through the day, it gets to that like perfectly like floppy drapey feel that linen gets. My favorite. Oh, and finally, this is one of my favorite vintage pieces I've ever found. Certainly one of the most unusual. This is a vintage silk blazer from Ungaro. Emmanuel Ungaro, I'm assuming. I'm very familiar with the name. This is probably late 70s, early 80s. I don't know if you are catching the sparkle on that lapel, but like, let me get you a little bit closer. That's like rhinestones and sequins and beading. It is Liberace, eat your heart out, right? The same embellishment here on the cuffs. Oh. I love it. But the thing that I love is just the shape of it. This is such like, I literally use dandy as a keyword because this is such a dandy blazer. It's got these beautiful knife pleats that kind of pick in. I like that kind of low single button, double breasted moment. It was just like, I had to have it. It was crumpled in a ball first of all, in the corner of a bin and my heart. But it's one of these things that is super unusual. So I knew that this was gonna take a minute to sell. How am I gonna fold this safely? But this is one of those kind of pieces. And I talk about this a lot. Like I literally felt a duty to it. I had to get it out of the waste stream and on to a new owner. And underneath the button, like where it joins, there's like an ash burn, you know, like it looks like somebody, you know, maybe like a cigarette ashed on it. I'm like, you know, you know this blazer has seen some stuff. Cause I mean like who's buying this, right? I, this has gotta be either like a stage piece, like a performance piece or somebody who is truly, cause this is a men's jacket. This is not a women's jacket. This is a men's jacket. So somebody who is truly flamboyant. Like I wouldn't be surprised if this was straight out of Liberace's closet, right? It's not as like flashy as Liberace is, but like, how fabulous is it? We're gonna do a little extra careful packing on this and do an extra layer of like moisture protection because it is silk and because it is vintage. So bear with me as I do that, I'll speed up this process. wonder what kind of stories this blazer has. And I hope it's going on to get a few more stories because anybody buying a piece like this, I want to be their friend. <laughs> So anyway, I had this listed for $80. I had it for about six months. Of course, this was gonna be something that took a little bit longer to sell, uh, but I got an offer for $60, which I gladly accepted with a $1 cost of the bins. This brought me to a profit of $47. And oh my God, I, 
I just, I truly honestly hope that this goes on to have another kind of crazy life, so. Because you know that this came from something crazy. But that is it, guys. That is the shipment for today. Thank you guys so much for hanging with me while I literally get my work done. It is always so fun to have somebody to nerd out about these things with. I mean, I show, I, I show anybody in my life that blazer, they're not gonna care. It's so nice to know that there are other people in the world that would also pick up a 1970s rhinestone men's blazer. But guys, if you had fun, please consider leaving a like or a comment on this video. Of course, don't forget to hit subscribe. But guys, without further ado, have the most beautiful weekend. Happy hunting, and I will see you in the next one.